All right. So uh, as I mentioned before we broke, I want to spend some time talking about tools. Um, Recap spends a tremendous amount of time putting together tools for both you all, the user group, as well as outside parties. One of the things that's important in the Recap program is that interaction between the Recap staff and the owners, consultants, and outside attorneys, all those folks. Um, so your, your, your team has developed a number of tools. Um, some are recap specific and some are HUD wide. Um, we're going to spend the first few minutes um, talking through a recap specific tool, which is the, the RAD resource test. Um, this is for the grant loan specialist, uh, a green light uh, tool that you are starting to use. Um, is kind of building off of the resource desk type platform. These platforms allow for, for you all, TMs, grant loan specialists, to process the transactions that have come in um, and allows the owners, the consultants, to participate with you in that process. So documentation that needs to be uploaded is uploaded in a common space. You all can see it, they upload it, you all can do your review. You can send that those reviews back to them. They can react to those. You can then do a, another review, and the back and forth, the interaction happens there. Um, it's cleaner for management oversight, the whole nine yards that you're doing it in one location rather than on the phone, in the email, on Teams. Okay, not that you can't use the phone, not that you can't use email, not that you can't use Teams, and probably should use all those things, but at least. The documentation of the transaction going through is being held and captured and followed in a single tool. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the RAG resource desk, um, but I want the grant loan specialists in the room to understand that Greenlight, the processing part of Greenlight, is based off of this. Um, it's not likely that the Greenlight tool is going to grow into the magnitude that the RAG resource desk is because we're going to walk through some of the functionalities that the resource desk has that is unnecessary for Greenlight, um, because for Greenlight, existing ownership, they already have PBRA contracts. It's not, they're not new to anything, as opposed to RAD, as John um, uh, was talking to earlier, you got public housing, leaving public housing authorities, leaving public housing, going to a whole new platform. So there's a lot more um, training guidance that needs to be provided for those folks who've been through. Okay? So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to walk through the resource desk generally just to kind of show you what it looks like. Um, I'm logged in as myself right now. And so since I'm a super user, if you will, I see lots of things. But I want to walk through and show all of you because everybody in the room, except for the grant loan specialist, everybody else in the room has some sort of access to the red resource desk. And yeah, I think it's always fun for you all to see the whole thing. And then I'm going to log in as a public housing authority. So you see what it looks like for just them. So we can kind of have a little contrast to what you all are used to seeing versus what they see, because I think it's helpful for everybody to understand when you're talking to, you know, an owner or a housing authority or consultant, and they're looking at something in the resource desk and you, you're like, well, I don't see that, or that's not the way I see that. You can understand kind of why that works. So those are my two goals for this. So a few of you, it's going to be super new to you. Others are old hat at this, but I think hopefully we'll get a good, good overview of what more things are. So the other thing I wanted to let you the group know, we found a lot we didn't figure this out earlier, but we're just mirroring the presentation there. So if it's easier to see, if you, you know, if you can't quite see enough, you can look over at that screen over there. Okay. So when you log in the resource desk, you have everybody has this kind of main card at the top that allows you to see, look for whatever you're looking for. Some of you all only have a red for public housing side, this left hand side. Okay. The right hand side is all the red for multifamily. So all of the pracs live over on this side. Okay. So some of you see this, some of you don't. Um, but this is for everybody. Some transaction managers see only the red for multifamily side. Some transaction managers see only red for PHA side and vice versa. But this is the way either one is you can search for various transactions. So if I am a uh, TM on the red for PHA side, I can look for my own deal, right? So let's see, pick on somebody who we've got in here. Where's my Carly? So we'll pick on Carly. So what's Carly's portfolio look like? 
doesn't matter what stage it is in the process. Just see what she's assigned currently. Okay, so she's got a whole bunch of financing plans not submitted. Okay, so for grant loan specialists in the room, this would be initial award. Okay, that's the initial stage. That's when you first come into the program. Okay, then she's got a few financing plans that have been submitted. So for grant loan specialists, this is when for elements, you're looking at the closing packages coming in. For leading edge soon, it will be the transaction plan. Okay. And for comprehensive, it'll soon be the scope of work. Okay. But that's the stage that we're in here. Then she's got some RCCs that have been issued. So those are approved waiting for closing. Okay. Then she's got some closed transactions. So if she wanted to go back and see something that she closed. So Carly has an entire portfolio of things that are about to come in, things that are in, things that are waiting to close, and things that have closed. Okay. So if Carly wants to look at this, if her boss wants to look at this, this is what she can pull up. Okay. Why would I ever want to pull any of this up? Well, maybe she learned something in this Fairlane Meadows deal that she wants to go back and reference. Okay. That's why access to the closed transaction is important. Okay. Why does she need to see the closing things? Well, for the closing coordinators in the room, you all know that when transactions move from transaction to closing, there are oftentimes back and forths. The transaction managers have to approve any changes to the pro forma or the sources and uses. And we're going to look at all these pieces in a minute. I'm just trying to set the stage for you all. For grant loan specialists, you don't have that distinction. You're going to be the transaction manager and the closing coordinator. You're taking it all the way through. So there'll be no distinction for you. But in the RAD program, there's a handoff that happens after the transaction plan has been approved. Okay. Then at the transaction place, so we got financing plan submitted. That's where Carly is doing the bulk of her work. Okay, that, that's when she's having the back and forth with the PHA. That's when she's doing her approval processing. And again, we're going to look at all this in just a minute, but I'm just kind of setting the stage for you. Here, lots of transaction managers don't have anything listed at financing plan not submitted. Why is that? Because there's no assignment that happens until a transaction comes in, except in certain cases, such as Cuyahoga, NYCHA, Chicago Housing Authority, certain large PHAs that are moving through large portfolios might need a little bit more help. And so RECAP has decided this to, to, to assign a transaction manager to those transactions. So that means that whenever these come in, they're automatically assigned to Carly. Okay. But other transaction managers, Stanley, for example, is not going to have that. He's only going to get deals that, as at the beginning, Amanda, only going to get deals that come in when they've requested their concept call. Okay, we're going to look at all that. Okay, but this is the processing part of this. Okay, so what does that mean? So let's take a look at one. Let's look at one of these ones. <laughs> so whenever I pull up a transaction, I can always get to whatever stage in the process it is through the transaction pages. And that goes for all users. So what I'm doing now, any user of the resource desk can do a deep dive into a particular transaction. Okay, or anybody in this room, I'm not saying all users, because some of some folks, but any any of this, this recap staff can look at this. So I can look at where it is on the kickoff call. I'm gonna skip, skip this because this summary is, is pretty much irrelevant, but concept call checklist, financing plan. As part of the financing plan, they're doing a transaction log. Then as part of oops, sorry, then as part of doing the review of the financing plan, the TM is doing the approval RCC data page. Then it moves into closing. Then we go into final closing. Okay. We're going to talk about these separate sections here, but one of the things I wanted to jump to real quick was post-closing processing. So John and Donna both mentioned that that's something that's become much bigger for both the red for PHA side and the red for multifamily side, there's now a whole section built out on the resource desk because we recognize that that interaction was starting to happen. Not something in the original design. Original design, much like GRRP, original design was once the transaction closed, the work's complete, completion search done, it's gone. There was no post completion search work contemplated until things started happening, right? PHA started coming in and saying, well, wait a minute. We need to refinance. This property doesn't work anymore. We actually want to transfer the assistance someplace else. There was no mechanism by which they could do that 
primarily on the PBV side. Okay, PBRA is a little bit easier because PBRA contracts are managed by asset management. So when a RAD conversion happens, both RAD PHA and RAD multifamily, it's PBRA. There's an account executive assigned to it. Okay, they want to do additional work, refinance. There's an account executive that handles all that. Okay, so there's a mechanism for that. PBVs, nope. Don mentioned PBV administrators, whether the PHA is the administrator or there's PBCA contractor who administers these PBV contracts. They don't actually have much oversight. They're just basically moving the subsidy money. They're paying you know, the subsidy part of the rent. There's a little bit of oversight. They have uh, uh, HQS inspections, so the housing quality standards inspections that they're doing to make sure that the property is okay, but they're not really reviewing changing in financing. Changing in ownership structures, that sort of thing. We call it a light touch line to the children. Yeah, exactly. So, but again, transaction pages. So that's what this section's all about. Part of any transaction has got a variety of documents that you might want to look at. So we've got a section called trans uh, transaction documents. So here you're going to find the pro forma, the sources and uses, okay, the approval memo. It was produced for, for approved transactions. CHAPS. I'm going to look at all these in just a second, but I'm just kind of setting the stage for you. At various parts of the process, there are certain action items that might need to happen. We have an action item section. So we've got financing plan extensions, uh, RCC extensions, closing coordinators are well, well aware of all that. Okay. We also have created a kind of opening for this page where you can jump to different sections of whatever page you're on. So in this particular section, I'm on the financing plan page. So if I want to look at if I want to look at the financing plan documents, I just jump at these and go straight to that card. So you see the other cards closed up, this one opened up. This card for grant loan specialist should look familiar. It's very similar to Greenlight, the transaction plan documents. You all right now have the closing checklist documents. Okay? Same sort of thing again, building on the learning from other programs in the design of the new programs. Okay. The last thing I'm going to show on this torch is very important for huh, the, tra the transaction managers. This is a little contact card. So if I click on the contact card at the top of any page, I see all the contacts for the current ownership group, the PHA, all of those folks on the first page, and then page two, all of the HUD staff that are involved. So in this particular case, this is a PBRA conversion. So I've got asset management. In here. If it wasn't PBRA, I wouldn't have these. But I also have all of the various staff that are working on this transaction. So what does that mean when I say all of the various staff that are working on this transaction? Uh, so I mentioned on the transaction pages, there are a couple of kind of outlier pages here. So I've got the public housing page and the FHEO page. Let's go to the FHEO page real quick. So for transactions that involve new construction, unit configuration changes, so I should change in occupancy types, okay? An FHEO upfront review is required. Well, FHEO talked to RECAP and said, we'd like to be notified when these happen sooner rather than later. We'd also like a portal in which we could do our review in conjunction with the TM and other folks that are doing this. And we'd like to have to have that same interaction with outside parties like you all have on the rest of yours. So recap said, great. So we built this interactive portal for the FHEO staff. Furthermore, we'll look at this in a second. We look at the concept call page because I think these are going to all be checked in a right. So all of these little check boxes are system driven, right? The tool knows when these things are required. So in this particular transaction, there were no FHEO reviews required. Everything was not applicable. Okay, we'll look at why that happened in a minute. On the PIH side, these are public housing properties coming into RAD to convert to Section 8. Has to be interaction with the PIH field office and their staff. There are certain reviews that they have to do. Wanted a place for that to be done. So we built a section on the resource desk for the PIH staff. So you see in this particular case, here are the reviewers that are being, there have been assigned. Then they have a subject matter expert that can help them. They can quickly see who's assigned from the RAD side, RAD. So there's Carly, right? 
Carly can quickly see who's working on the PIH side. And then what are they doing? They also have a checklist, right? Everyone wants a processing checklist, right? In this case, it's set up so that they can go through, provide whatever approval they need, as well as any comments that their staff need to convey to the approving officials. There is a single approving official for every transaction, and they only do that at closing. So this box is typically not, not checked until it moves into the closing stage. So right now we're looking at one that's for financing plan review, not going to be checked yet. Moving to RCC, yeah, it's going to start being necessary to close. And we'll look at that page in a second, right? So if I go to the closing page, I'm a closing coordinator in this transaction. I'm looking at this. What other approvals do I need to close this transaction out, okay? So the tool is talking to all of the various participants in this, okay? Is that making sense to folks? All right. Another piece of the resource desk that I think is fun is the documentation for guidance. So on the main page, there's a section called the document library. Public users can get to this. People with accounts can get to it. The document library, like the rest of the resource desk, is tailored to the user. So there are things that you all inside the recap office can see that the owner's consultants can't see. Okay, so you can manage what tools they're getting to see as they go through this. And then we built this out so that it kind of lays out the timing of things. So general guidance, when the applications are done, the chaps, that sort of thing. So if I'm looking for something and trying to put together my financing plan, I'm going to go to my conversion requirements. And here we go. There's a whole section on the capital needs assessment. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. What happens with environmental reviews? Here are some financing plan guides. So everything that I would want to know or understand is embedded here in the tool so that I don't have to go look someplace else for it. Okay. Similarly, we have a little spoke for training. You all do lots of trainings. This, this is just one in this series of trainings. But again, you do trainings for outside parties, inside. All of it lives here. So you can see the webinars, the slides. Carly was asked about the slides. These will be posted here. But we'll see the February 2024 slides will show up here. Okay. Sorry, yes. does GLS have access to this? Grant Loan Specialists do not have access to this. Oh, no. No, we're, so no. where is our version of? So green light is the processing tool. You don't have this. Oh, so no, where your guides live is in Teams. So we've created Teams folders for the leading edge SOPs uh -huh. and all the various guides. Those are going to live there. Okay. So you'll have the Teams platform with all that stuff saved, saved there. And then the green light tool will be for processing. Okay. Okay. So let's go back and look at how we got here. Let's continue with this transaction. All right, so let's take a look at it. So when this transaction first came in, actually when it very first came in, it received its CHAP. At the CHAP stage, every new PHA receives technical assistance from an, another uh, recap contractor who provides four months of one-on-one -on -one time with the owner, showing about the resource desk, talking about all the stuff John talked about earlier today, how the rents got set, what you can do to supplement the rents, what are the rent caps, what should you be thinking about? You're going to order a CNA. What's that going to tell you? What do you need to do with that? How are you going to finance that? Okay, so that kickoff call happens at the point of chap. The chap is always kept under these transaction documents and the chaps all get amended. You know, people talk about certainties in life, death and taxes. Well, the other certainty in life is that the chap is going to be amended. Okay. I don't think there's ever been a process, a chap that's come through the RAD process that hasn't been amended. So the original chap is always here under view chap and then you, the most recent ones are at the top moving forward. So why does that happen? Just a second, Joey. One of the reasons that CHAPs always get amended is that they never close within a year. And you all give every CHAP an OCAP adjustment at the end of every year. So pretty much every year, there's going to be at least one CHAP amendment. 
Okay. Joey. That was my question. That was your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the exception to that, that has not actually been an exception because it hasn't played out, but Anna has been working through Faircloth to Rad transactions that John mentioned. And a Faircloth to Rad transaction, in theory, should come in and have the chap issued and they should close within 90 days tops, right? So there should be no additional OCAF adjustment. There shouldn't be any other changes. Um, but Gainesville maybe did. Did they close without a chap amendment? They might have. But anyway, a couple other ones didn't and turned a year around. So anyway, chap amendments. But this is where you can find them. Not that you really ever need to see them because it all flows through. And we'll look at that in a second. But that's where that lives. This is an important page where the rents get set. And this shows all of the rent changes. So like every CHAP amendment, you can see the various rents that have changed. This is important because you all are reviewing how much income is coming in. So what is my gross potential rent on these red transactions? This is how it gets calculated. It's also important to know what the utility allowances are. Okay. Also important to see what OCAFs have been applied, right? In this particular case, since this transaction's in closing or close to closing, we've already applied the 2024 rents. Those get automatically applied. Okay. Every two years, RAD does a reset of the base rents. So we're in 2024 now. The new rents will be based on 2024 operating numbers and capital numbers that are going to come out in the next few months. So 20 is confusing, but in 2025, the 2024 rents will come out. And so we'll have a new set of rents, a new base year. At that point in time, the PHAs will be able to decide if they want to keep their current rents, which may be based on 2018, that have been OCAFed. That number, believe it or not, might be higher than the new 2024 base rents. But PHAs have a choice to keep the higher rents, the higher of the two. Okay. All right. So that rent schedule rolls into the transaction log. This transaction log is being built out similarly in green light. So grant loan specialist, you all will see this, okay? There's gonna be a pro forma. There's gonna be a source of uses that's very similar to what we're seeing here. This number here, automatically calculated, okay? Based on the rent schedule. And then the PHA has to fill the rest of this in. This is what the transaction managers are doing when they're underwriting the transaction, looking at the pro forma looking at the sources and uses below. In this case, this PHA has got um, hard debt, which we need to figure out why they think they have hard debt. I know this, this is a coyote, so I know why this isn't. Um, typically, you wouldn't see PHAs with hard debt. So I always love pulling up random transactions that I don't know. Um, but all of you, all the information here, What when you're reviewing this, this is what you're looking at, okay? Seeing what's reasonable. Back and forth with the PHA. Where are you getting the money? What are you paying for? How much does it cost? Is that reasonable or not? Okay. That's the interplay between those things. Kickoff call sets the stage. Concept call. The PHA then goes in. After they had their kickoff call, they start walking through the process. They complete this checklist, it's a series of questions about the transaction. These questions drive a lot of potential reviews that might need to happen. For example, if this transaction was new construction, so if this answer was yes, they would need to have had an FHEO site neighborhoods review, an upfront review, had it been done before the concept call, could even be requested, okay? You don't want a transaction coming in that may not be approvable because they're trying to move to a site that's not allowed. FHEO has a whole series of rules that they look at, okay? They go through all of these various questions, different prompts, provide more information. You as a transaction manager, you as a closing coordinator, when you're looking at your pages, you're following along the prompts that you're given, okay? Well, I'm just gonna walk through the concept call checklist later today. This is one of the tools that we're using. There's also a relocation plan. John talked about the right to return and some of the relocation um, uh, benefits going through RAD. This is where that gets laid out, finding out whether or not they have a relocation plan. Do they have a relocation to begin with? Okay, what criteria are we looking at when we review that? Okay. 
So once that comes in, the concept call is held, transaction manager invites them to submit, they submit the financing plan, here are the pieces that they've submitted. Again, there are a whole series of items on the checklist that they have to, sometimes some have to, some apply, some don't, okay? So one of the things we were talking about earlier was choice mobility. So for a PBRA transaction, if I'm a housing authority that does not have a voucher program, so believe it or not, there are a bunch of PHAs that don't PHAs that don't administer vouchers. Well, if they don't administer vouchers, and choice is a voucher component, then they would have no way of doing that. So when Rad was set up, they created a pool, kind of a, a like a, a, a pot of funds, a pot of units, if you will, that said up to 10% of all conversions can be exempt from choice if they go PBRA. So if I'm a housing authority that I don't have a voucher administrating component, I can apply for this waiver. I don't have to do it. In this particular case, the PHJ is converting PBRA, but they're a voucher administrator. Therefore, they're not exempt from choice. So quick place to let the PHA and the transaction manager know this is what's happened here. Okay. You notice we have two columns, PHA comments and transaction manager comments. This checklist is seen by both sides. So in some cases, transaction managers put their review comments here and send them back to the PHA. In other cases, PHAs put comments in here. Okay, they respond back. For green light folks, this is exactly the same way that the documents are going to be reviewed. They come in, you all look at it, you provide your comments, send them back. Document, I need a new document. You know, this half contract's not the right one. Send it back to them. They upload a new. Okay. They see your comments, they respond. They can provide you comments, you can respond. Okay. A similar sort of thing in Greenland. Right. The system knows which pieces are required, just like in Greenland. Okay. Once all these documents are uploaded, in this particular case, you're seeing all the history all of the uploads, all the documentation. Very important for recap management to have a complete picture of the transaction, everything that's exchanged back and forth, okay? You want to know what's there, all right? Excuse me. So financing plan documentation. Now, for the RAD team, we've designed a checklist, if you will, a review checklist to it in the resource desk. This is only seen by recap staff. So the owners, the PHAs don't see this, okay? But what this does, it allows you all to go through and check and see all of the various program requirements based on each section that you're looking at. So the top page here sets the kind of standard for what the rules are gonna be based on some answers that you're providing. And then, a series of cards open up below, talking about ownership, a very important component of the RAD program, okay? Talking about the development budget, what, what building's happening? Did they do a CNA? How old was it? Were the various rules followed? How much money are they putting in? Is it adequate, okay? You'll see all these checks, these questions, see the RPCA standard. So all those things are there to remind you one, what to look at and what the requirement is, okay? Some of these questions and answers flow to the approval documents, some don't, but they all serve a purpose to let you know that you're doing your review correctly, okay? Places for comments, all of this sort of thing. Again, this is, a, this is an internal interaction because once you finish this, you then send it to your branch chief who then reviews it to make sure it's correct before it then goes to John for a final approval or potentially to loan committee. Okay. Again, owners don't see this. This is an internal exchange back and forth, but the information that's been gathered is from owner input. Okay. Consultants input. Right. Once the approval has been issued, then it moves over to the closing side. The closing team then looks at their pages. Take a minute to get there, okay? And then again, you'll notice they also have, this should look very familiar for the grant loan specialist because here we are as our closing checklist. 
because that's about the only thing the grant loan specialists have been looking at for a little while. So there's your closing checklist. OK. And much like green light, file uploaded, comments. Look and feels a little different, but philosophically, it's the same thing. OK, building on that. The theme for the for the for the you know for the next few days, the programs building on themselves. Okay. Once the transaction closes, then the PHA owner uploads all the final closing documents. Then when it moves into um, completion cert, uh, Then they come back, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log in as owner in a second and we'll look at it. They come in and do their completion certification, fill in their parts, then you all do that. So I'm going to switch in and log in as an owner just a minute so we can look at that page. Okay. So navigating back and forth, navigating through different people, see different things. So let's take a look and see what a housing authority looks, looks at. Okay, so when I log in as a housing authority, you'll notice the first thing you'll notice that's different is there's no way for me to search for anything, right? This housing authority has a defined set of properties on the resource desk. They don't get to see anybody else's, okay? If they want some data on something, they can go to the public data section, but they can't look at anything but their transactions. But you'll also notice a similar thing that we were looking at when we were looking at Carly's portfolio. You can see they have things coded similarly, right? I've got financing plan not submitted. I've got financing plan submitted, but then, oh, oh interesting. Something new, withdrawn. I didn't see that when I was a transaction manager, right? Okay. Housing authorities withdraw CHAPs or CHAPs are withdrawn for them on a regular basis. Why would that happen? Well, housing authority comes in, they have an amp that has 250 units in it. When they applied for RAD, they have no idea what they're going to do. They just applied for 250 units. They got a chat. So can't do 250 units at a time. They decide they want to do it in chunks. First one they come up with, well, they're going to do a 50, 50 unit tax credit transaction on the south side of town. They need to do chat. They need to withdraw the one that was there. Have a new one for 50 and a new one for 200. Carly. Is there any, um, are they penalized at all yeah. if they do that? Okay. If there's not, I wish they were. Um, yeah. Again, back to my comment earlier about debt and taxes and CHAP amendments. So, uh, since we process all the CHAP amendments, um, you know, Bam will tell you it's an awful lot of fun to process CHAP amendments. Um, but no, there's no penalty. So, there has been a shift in management's position on older transactions. And so, this time last year, William and, and John and a few others developed a policy around extensions and how many extensions were going to be granted and how long you could you could allow this to go on. And basically what they came down to come to it came back with was the first extension is automatic given to you. You get an extension for a year. Second extension comes in. William's going to review it, see if it makes sense. We'll extend it for a period of time that he agrees to. Third extension comes in, it's going to John. John's going to look at it, and you really have to have a really good reason why you're going to be extend, extended. Fourth extension comes in, not going to happen. We're going to move you to revocation. So when a revocation happens, that process then kicks in, goes to approval committee. There's a series of transactions that are going to be revoked in any given meeting, and then that you know that withdrawal would be the reason for withdrawal would have been revocation. So we can see in the system why it was done, but the PHA would just see it as withdrawn. Amanda. <laughs> so the initial chap is designed, so the initial process for RAD was designed to close in 12 months, okay? So the idea was a PHA would apply, they would go get their reports, you know, and within six months, they would submit a financing plan. And it would take, Two or three months for a transaction manager to review and approve it. 
and then two or three months for them to close it after that. So thus 12 months. What we have found over the last 10 years of running this program is that virtually no PHA comes in with a financing plan in the first 12 months, forget about six months, the first 12 months, okay? Which will why the decision was made for any PHA out there to request an extension and just automatically be given a year. There's so many reasons it's hard to even go through them. Tax credit deadlines, you know, didn't know what they were doing. CNA came back and said that had a ton of work. There's all sorts of reasons. What, what We weren't ready, all that sort of thing, okay? So then after that first extension, I would say, what do you think, William? 30%, 40% of transactions then are in a position after that year extension to actually submit a financing plan, okay? So the number starts going up later, but you know, and there's no benefit. It's also no benefit for the program to kick people out. Right. It's kind of a yin and yang here. I mean, the reason to kick them out is because it's taken so long, but at the same time, they need to be in. I mean, the consensus is these, these, these transactions need to close. These PHAs need to be converting their units. You know, you heard talk, John, some of John's frustration about the, you know, the radomatics and the no debt transactions. And those were done early on because recap wanted closings. Turns out that wasn't the best approach. It would have been better to push back a little bit more and say, you know what? No, maybe not. Maybe not. So, okay. So again, PHA sees this, they see all their withdrawals. They could go look at them if they wanted to, but again, it's, it's set up the same sort of way that we were talking about before. But then when I go to this as a PHA, I'm going to go straight to the page that I'm working on. So in this case, the concept called checklist. So we're talking about that. You'll notice that there's a little guide here at the top because they want to schedule a concept call because they have to have a concept call before they can submit their financing plan, right? And the button's all grayed out. So you have users that are frustrated. Why can't I push the button? Well, right above that, it tells you what you haven't done. Well, in this case, they haven't actually completed the concept called checklist. So pretty fundamental, right? If they had selected a question, answer to a question where, oh, they did, this is great. So this is new construction. So they selected yes. That meant that the site neighborhood standards review card opened up for them, okay? They submitted all that information on this card back and forth with FHEO. And you see they submitted it. This is old, so they submitted this in, back in 2021, and they got approval for it back in 2021, okay? Highly unlikely that this transaction is actually going to go through with this. They're going to make changes to the concept called checklist, which is, again, why it's saying you need to hear this done, okay? But this is how that, work, that works through. So if I go back up to the top and I see what's going on, let's see what they're missing. Well, now you start seeing there's no answer here. There's no answer here. So they haven't actually completed most of these questions that they need to complete okay so for in order for them to actually have this button down here in grade they're going to have to answer the questions above and furthermore if they had for example if they answer these section 18 questions there are going to be some additional comments that they're going to have to provide in order to advance forward okay so again the tools designed to enforce the rad policies make it easy for the users to comply and then make it easier for you all as transaction managers and viewers to see what you're doing, okay? you also see that when I go to the financing plan page, this looks slightly different. I've got a whole ownership section at the top, okay? So if you remember when I was a transaction manager and I was looking at the other pages, it started with some other, other cards and this was down the bottom. This is so important to recap that we moved it all the way to the top. It's above the files that need to be uploaded because so many PHAs got this section wrong. And since we're signing legal documents, it's important that it's right. We've tried to force them to take the time to complete this correct okay? But then you'll fall, you'll notice that we then fall into the same checklist, which we've already seen before. In this case, there's a place for them to put their comments in, okay? They can write their stuff in back and forth, all right? Similarly, our closing page, and then at the end, it's not closed. I got to get the closed one. I'll show you that. Let's get a we'll closed one. Oh, did I? Of course, we don't have a closed one. Um, but they would have the close the completion search checklist that I was talking about before. Okay, so that would be the way they would see that. They can also go, as I showed you on our page earlier. They can also go look at these various documents. 
but you'll notice that their documentation is a little bit shorter. If you remember the environmental review section, for example, was much, much larger when I logged in um, as my user tug, because there's a lot of stuff for you all in there that they don't need to see. All of this stuff is driven for them, right? their partners, right? You know, the users. Of course, all of these various pieces that are important to them as well, the milestones and requirements, that's all going to stay there. Okay. Again, tailored to what they need to see. All right. Other thing that they can do, which you all can't do, is they can provide access to other users. So if I'm a housing authority, I'm the executive director, and I have a consultant that I want to hire to work on the RAD transaction, I have that consultant set up an account on the resource desk, and then they request access through me, and then I can select and prove that for them. Okay, keeps you all out of the process of doing that makes no confusion about who provided access. So if I have a housing authority that comes back, you know, two months from now and says, what? John Artavini has access to all my documentation. I didn't want John Artavini to have access to my documentation. The answer back from the resource desk and from recap is you provided that access. And furthermore, here's the record of it. You gave access to the tool to these folks. Okay. So keeps you out of the out of the loop on that. Okay. Let's see what else I wanted to show. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show, which I didn't show earlier, is there's also what's known as the knowledge base, which basically takes the RAD notice and breaks it up into little parts. So you can see all of the various. So if I was looking, for example, if I wanted to see something that was, you know, resident participation, anything, any guidance that's been listed out there, including the notice. So this section of the notice is all about that. So if I'm a transaction manager, recap staff, owner, whomever, I can go straight to this, look this up, and it'll pull up the exact section of the notice that references this. Okay. It also provides other guidance around this, but this is my favorite feature because it's very nice to be able to pull notice requirements, particularly for recap staff who have to sometimes quote back. Somebody will say, well, where does it, where does it tell me that in the notice? I can go right there and pull it up. And furthermore, you can say, and you can go right there and pull it up. You didn't have to ask me about this. Okay. All right. What else did I want to show you from the PHA side? Uh, da, da, da. Ba, 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 ba. I want to show the con so the contact part that I talked about before. Also, same for them, right? This is something that we added a few years ago that people love. That you know, they, you all have it, they have it. Everyone can get all their contacts for any transaction. It's all it's all right there for them. Oh, action items. So if I'm a housing authority, I have much more limited availability on what I can request. I can request an extension, right? Um, or I can request this piece I wanted to show you. I can request technical assistance. So let's say I finished my kickoff call. I've had my four months of initial TA. Um, they talked to me about the resource desk. They told me all these different things. And I decided that I, I really needed to do a lot of work. So I went out and got a CNA. And it took four or five months to get the CNA done. I went back and forth with the needs assessment. It turned out there was tons of work that needed to be done. Okay, well, I'm now eight months removed from my initial slug of TA, and I'm not very sophisticated. I'm very confused as to what's going on. Well, I want more help. I can go straight to the resource desk, and I can say, you know what? I need some help financing the conversion. So I can click on this little checkbox here. I can type in notes, and I can send it in. That goes straight to John. John looks at it and says, you know what? You need tons of work. Clicks a button, sends it straight to the enterprise TA folks. Actually, Sabra helps out with this. So I, I skipped a step. So then anyway, too much detail, but it goes straight to them. They get contacted directly by the, by the TA provider. So it's a real nice seamless way for everybody to know what's going on. Okay. Fair. Okay. Yeah. The other thing I want to show on this. I did want to pull this up. So here, I just want to show you this because I was thinking about what we were talking about. So when, I, when I'm when i with PHA and I pull up withdraw transaction, it tells me what happened here. So in this case, I know that the PHA withdrew this, this transaction. 
If it was revoked, it would say revoked. Okay. If it was going, if it said combined chap or chap amended, it would say that. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yes. You can always reapply. Yep. Yep. Okay. Questions, comments, thoughts, 